Welcome everybody to this week's Mindful Social. And you know, this show is all about being mindful with how you use social media, how you use marketing, and just being a mindful business person. And this week I'm very excited to have Lynn Abate Johnson with me. And, you know, I've really followed her for a long time. We've interacted a lot on social, but we've never actually met in person, which is the beauty of the Internet, isn't it? So I'm really happy to have you here, Lynn. And I'd love for you to tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Well, first of all, Janet, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the invitation in the first place because I have admired you from afar on the Internet. <laughs> As we've traveled in very similar circles, and of course, we, you know, all the cream rises to the top. And so here we are, I guess. Here we are the cream. If you could call us cream, but <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm, I've been, I, it seems like I've been working my whole life, and that's by choice. Since I was a kid, I grew up in a big ethnic family um, who was full of. Uh, who is still uh, full of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so we're bringing up the next generation that way as well. And so everything that you are putting out and that you stand for, I also resonate with. And I think it's important to give other up and coming entrepreneurs a chance to see kind of what is what it really takes and, you know, the disappointments along with the wins um, and the challenges and the pitfalls. And I always hope that by my experience, I can encourage and, um, and serve other people in starting their own businesses and also becoming social businesses because now it's a lot different than it used to be when we didn't have social. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk about that during our conversation today, but it just seems... I'm just so excited to have this as a tool, you know, to have social media tools um, for one thing, but then also to have all of the different um, digital media tools to access and to reach people at a faster pace. Although it still does take time to establish relationships, as we mm -hmm. all know, there's there's really I don't think there's any shortcut to that, to no. establishing solid, deep you know, relationships that are going to. Um, not only provide business opportunities over time, but also forge relationships where we get into referrals and, you know, generations of people refer generations of their friends and family. So I hope that answered your first question. <laughs> I think so. I can I just go off on tangents, man. I could talk about this stuff all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you know, that's the interesting thing to me that, you know, we've both been in this business more than 20 years now, and we've seen a lot of change come and go. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there are a lot of struggles that are still the same for businesses starting up, particularly businesses that want to be social entrepreneurs. They want to change the world. They don't want to just sell widgets. They want to make a difference. And those are the kind of companies that we love to work with. We do. So, you know, let's let's talk a little bit about how we choose who we work with and what impact that has on our own businesses. Yes. And I I think it's really important to get clear for ourselves who we are and who we um, who we do want to work with. And what we stand for. So uh, many, many, many years ago, um, when I was, I was struggling a little bit and I was in sales and I was training big sales forces to um, sell widgets. I was in the cosmetics industry mm -hmm. um, and I did that for about 25 years. And um, I would, I would say to my my people, you know, you've got to figure out who, who, who you stand for, like who you are, who your clients are, what, what is your market? And I came up with a list of, you know, who I would really be willing to work with. And it was mm -hmm. conscious business owners. So people that were 
at least they were waking up, if not completely awake. And because I figured that, you know, we all kind of rise to the level of those that we associate with. And so I always wanted to hang around and associate with people who were coming up and they would kind of encourage each other to rise to another level each time and kind of layer in the levels of business development. And that's what really excited me. So as soon as I put that down on paper, like literally I wrote it down and then I put it in front of my eyeballs (laughs) as I sat at my desk Mm -hmm. every day. I started, a funny thing happened. I started to attract more and more conscious business owners and people who wanted to um, get to the next level and not only said that they wanted to, because anybody can want, Mm -hmm. but it's really having a burning desire and a willingness to put in the time and the effort that it takes to do that. And it doesn't have to be a struggle, but it's it's much less of a struggle if you actually have your identity solid and um, and also if you're if you're smart in developing your business in terms of you know your price points what you're charging for your for your widgets and your services um, mm-hmm. your logistics of you know how you how you put it out there and then how you follow through with the sale and then how you um, how you generate referral business afterwards. So all of those things kind of come into play when um, we're talking about business development and becoming a social entrepreneur is really to me taking advantage of the tools that we have now to do what we always did. Um, But instead of, you know, kind of out in front of the barbershop or out at the coffee shop or at big networking groups, which, still exist and they have their value Mm -hmm. for sure. Um, That's kind of how I cut my teeth on learning to present myself in public. Mm -hmm. All of those things come into play when you're developing a whole business. So it's not just one thing, it's everything. It's social, it's SEO, it's email list building, it's having a decent website, it's you know being out there with the people, you know, doing some public speaking. I do some teaching locally uh, for small and medium businesses, just to kind of try and demystify the social media piece for them. Mm-hmm. And because uh, by and large, it really is still a mystery for the, yeah. for, for the small and medium businesses. Yeah, I think that's something that definitely hasn't changed over time is that, you know, people are still struggling to market their businesses, whether they're using social or they're using print or they're using a guy with a sandwich board in front of their restaurant. You know, it's it's very different. But I think that the mindset has changed a little bit, um, at least with the companies that I work with. Um, you know, one of the people that I work with uh, is actually watching. Gail uh, is on and Gail and I have worked together for some time. And, you know, she's a very conscious person. And I think that the more that you work with people that have kind of the same mindset yes. or the same drive and passion for what they do really makes a difference in how you work with them, with your working relationships, and also with the referrals that you get from those people, because you're developing a deeper relationship than just some surface. Yeah, I can make an ebook for you. Right. Which anybody can do that. Probably. Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. That's what distinguishes Um, a conscious business from, you know, a business that is always going to struggle because they're just, you know, they're jumping from one new thing to another and they're hearing about something over here and they think, oh my gosh, I have to do that. You know, Mm -hmm. I can't even tell you the number of calls I get, you know, from people who say, oh my gosh, I need to be on Facebook now. (laughs) And I say, why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why do you say that? Why do you think that? Is it because somebody told you you should? 90% of the time. Yeah. And, (laughs) and if so, you know, let's dig in. And, and a lot of times, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a one size fits all style uh, for every one that comes to me. So I, I very often will refer people out to others um, because I will put people's feet to the fire and say, why do you think Mm -hmm. that? And we'll dig a little deeper because I really want to build a holistic business practice and, Um, a whole business model that can be sustained over time. 
and mm -hmm. to where I, as a consultant, can come in and you know help them formulate even a business plan if they don't have it, and then take it from there and not even really need me for the rest of their lives. You know, they can they can have a really great foundation, and if they have a decent team in place. Uh, then, and it may include me and it may not include me, at least I know that they're going to be okay, you know, kind of in building a pot layer upon layer of their business processes. So yeah, the relationships have everything to do with the success in terms of the way that we work with our clients and also the way that our clients work with their clients and customers. So those are timeless truths. And, you know, I always say, you know, to those of us who kind of instinctively know this, and then we we try and put it into ways that the business owners can understand and not only in, understand, but implement there. It's ancient wisdom almost, you know, there's nothing new. The only thing new is the tools. And, you know, as a business owner, you don't have to know every tool. You don't have to know everything. I mean, it's like I compare it to Oprah, you know, the Oprah theory where, you know, she clearly and fully and freely admits that she doesn't know everything that, the, that it has taken to build her empire. Sure. And, and so she has developed, you know, trusted team members to do that with her. She has mm -hmm. the vision and then she puts it out there. So yeah, I, I try and help business owners really feel more confident in themselves and we identify their strengths you know, their skills and the, I don't even go into the area of, you know, weaknesses because I don't really consider that to be a factor. So if we focus on the strengths, then we can identify the gaps in the business, what's missing. And then we can, we can backfill from there, find talent that can help really build the business and catapult it forward. Right. Yeah. And I think that's a really important lesson for any business now. You know, I, I had a call the other day from someone who really wanted to do everything themselves from mm -hmm. start to finish, video production, everything. And, you know, it really isn't necessary to try to do all of that yourself. And in some in, in many cases, it's what's going to set you back because you're spending all of that time, you know, trying to be everyone. And nowadays there's so much required of a business to market yeah. and how many things they need to do, whether it's a website or a video, or, you know, they just need to create the content. Having some help with that is, is crucial. And the smaller the business, the more important it is because they may not have somebody to, to help them create that. So the relationships that they have with consultants like us or, or yeah. with people on their team who can really bang that out and, and make it good and carry that passion forward is really important. We can't, we can't be a one-stop shop anymore. I don't right. think. Right. Yeah. And I think that's why it's so important to, you know, vet the people that you're going to work with and for mm -hmm. the people that you're going to work with also to do some research before they get on the phone, before they have a meeting, you know, do the research on the people that they're going to be working with to see, you know, how, what, what kind of a hit they get, you know, mm -hmm. with their instincts and, um, you know, entering into relationships is just so important in life and business. I mean, we all, we all have been there. We've been on the wrong side. We've been on the winning side. <laughs> so if we can learn, you know, for the next time, how to do it a little bit better, and, um, you know, how to interview someone, what questions to ask. I mean, I have a I have a 90 minute intake, you know, that I do on the phone with mm -hmm. a new client. So that's that's part of my onboarding process so that I can get to know them. And I only take clients that I believe in. So then I don't have to make anything up. I don't have to force anything. I don't have to struggle. And if I believe in the potential client and their mission, then I'm going to consider, you know, putting, plugging them in to my, my daily routine. Cause I really love being hands-on and mm -hmm. I, although I do have a team as well for all of the different things that we do, I love being hands-on because I, 
I just treasure relationship building and community building. And um, I did that for almost two years in Silicon Valley. So um, I just really started to love that, that piece mm -hmm. of it, you know, the community building piece online. Oh yeah. And, and really for me, the web has always been a big online community. That was kind of the goal. And, you know, people say, how long have you been doing social media? And I'm like 20 years. Yeah, it really, exactly. it really isn't new. It's just a new name for it. Exactly. Um, you know, I'd like to go back to something you said that, you know, talking about working with clients that you really have vetted and you feel they're passionate about what they do. Every once in a while, I'll take a client that I'm not really passionate about, you know, somebody that maybe it's going to give me a good income boost right when I need it. Maybe it's somebody that in the beginning, I think they had a lot of passion and a lot of drive and a lot of uh, social consciousness and turned out they didn't. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about how to vet, what your vetting process is. 90 minutes is longer than I do, I have to say. So how does that work? How yeah. You, and we, and we don't nice. always, we don't always even get it done in 90 minutes. And some of it is logistical stuff, you know, um, some of it is just, you know, boring stuff like the credentials, you know, mm -hmm. to get into accounts and stuff like that. But a lot of it is, you know, asking it, it's like um, it's the geographics, the demographics, the psychographics of the potential client, or actually this is a client by the time I'm doing the intake, it's a client. So, you know, the contract has been signed and we're underway. So the first piece of it is that interview that I do with them. And I ask them questions about what their hobbies are even things like that, so that I can get to know them inside their heart mm -hmm. and inside their head. And what do you do on Sundays? You know, what do you do on Sunday afternoons? And do you have favorite authors? Um, who are your favorite authors? Do you have favorite sports teams? So I'm really digging into the business. If it's a personal brand, no brainer. You know, I'm asking all of those personal questions and some that they've never even thought of the answer to, and they don't even really understand what that has to do with building their business. Why so, are you asking? Right. right. They And they say, you know, I've never thought of that. And I, and I say, you know, where are you right now? And I want like numbers. If like, how do you measure your success? So where are you right now? And where do you want to be in two years, three years, five years from now? And what's missing? What has been missing for you? Why haven't you gotten to that point yet? What, what has held you back? Um, you know, I, I really kind of dig deep uh, during that first interview. And sure. then it, it helps me. It helps me not only onboard, if they're bringing me in also to run their social accounts, it not only helps me to onboard and prepare their social accounts with language that makes sense to attract the right kinds of customers, but also for, you know, who they're going to show up as in the world. So I kind of get them thinking about things that are relevant that they really didn't think were relevant. Yeah. Um, Bringing so out I, those things that they may not be aware of that they need, particularly, you know, I think that I've gotten a lot of business requests where once you start to talk to them, they're like, well, you're building the website. Aren't you going to build the logo? and mm -hmm. define the brand and mm -hmm. all of those things. Mm -hmm. And they really didn't realize that they needed to give that that much thought before they went forward. And so that's a much bigger process. And that really yep. takes a lot of deep digging. You know, yeah, it's so true. Even before I'll even start to build a website. And um, I, I kind of love doing that because that is also a reflection of the person inside and outside. Um, and so I, I get lots and lots of photographs. So we use Dropbox to organize that. And I have the client drop as many photos as possible of their travels, of their family. And that way I can sort through. And then I get to choose, you know, the kind of look and feel and design and what we're going to put out there. Because I, I understand sales and marketing language. I understand what compels people to come and do business with you. So, so it's, it's nice for them to be able to just 
dump that, you know, and then let me go through it all. And that's part of the time consuming process of creating community around any brand. This could be a personal brand. It could be, I mean, I've worked with the enterprise before too. And I always say that I have always been able to make a bigger impact with the small and medium brands that are aware and that, um, and that appreciate that objective eye, you know, kind of the eye of the consumer mm-hmm. and the person who has the experience and all of the, the knowledge learned through making mistakes and also having wins over the years. So, sure. Yeah. Now you consider yourself a social business person as well. And we haven't talked about people forward and I'd, I'd love for you to talk about that. And I should tell you that Gail is a wine aficionado, so she'll get this too. Oh, but, I love it. Uh, okay. Let's, let's talk a little bit about what people forward means to you. So I was trying to think of what to name my business because I was just kind of dabbling at first after my Silicon Valley thing. And I was wondering if I should go back, you know, into the San Francisco area and, and get another mothership gig. Right. And the, one of the founders of the company I was with in, in Sunnyvale said, Lynn, you, you can't, you can't go into a cubicle. You'll just get swallowed up. You, you're much more, than that. You know, you've got to be somewhere where you can really shine and make a difference for people. If you get into a big corporate thing, you'll get lost. So I thought, okay, I guess I have to get serious and take my own advice and name it and claim it. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so I said, well, I live in wine country and, you know, all all of the, the winos, you know, and I use that term affectionately, I know a lot. Um, that are very into wine, they will identify a wine as fruit forward. And so I thought, okay, forward. I've always appreciated that word um, moving forward. And because I feel like as long as you're going in that direction, you're good. Even if you're taking a couple steps back, you know, you're still going to move one step forward and, and get the momentum. But I thought people forward because I've always focused on the people. So in, in the sales training that I used to do, I would tell my people, you know, if you're standing up there and you're giving a presentation and you forget everything else, just bring yourself back to the center, which is the people that you're serving and just look them straight in the eyeballs and almost just say, I love you with your eyes, Mm -hmm. right? You don't have to say it out loud. (laughs) But that comes through. It's just like when you're talking on the phone, right? Mm -hmm. When we're talking on the phone, we can hear a smile. Yes. It makes a difference. I took a, um, back when I lived in Michigan, many years when I was first starting out, there was uh, Michigan Bell at the time, the phone company, and they gave a seminar called Phone Power. And Mm -hmm. so those little things make a huge difference. So people forward is just focusing on the people and why you're there and, you know, how you can serve them. So um, I practice that in my business, in my, in my personal brand. You know, you'll see a lot of very positive and encouraging and educational. Um, because I love what I do, I can talk about it. Like I said earlier, I can talk about <laughs> it all day long. There are a few things I can talk about all day long mm-hmm. ad nauseum. One is New Zealand. One is my, you know, my business and business development, social media marketing, and the other is Burning Man. So mm-hmm. go figure. <laughs> I'm a study in contradictions. <laughs> well, and let's add BMX bikes to that too. And BMX, my BMX family, which I'm just <laughs> just came off of a a high. I'm still on a on a cloud of love. That's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Not very not very many people would give up Burning Man for a BMX. <laughs> well, it, it didn't exactly happen that way, but I'm actually glad uh, that it worked out and uh, and that I was able to go. Um, I, For those who don't know, I was just in Denver. I came back from an international competition and I actually showed up Friday night and surprised my niece who was at practice that night. And I had the, the Lyft driver drop me off at the venue and then I came, rolled around with my little, you know, roll away suitcase. <laughs> in the grass and looking up on the big, you know, BMX ramps and to see if I could see her. And 
Do you want to hear the story? Of yeah. how she that I was there. It's it's kind of this is kind of a personal thing, but she's uh, she's up on the ramp, really high up, and she happened to she's got an eagle eye, so she looked down on the ground, and she said, "That looks like my aunt." She was telling a couple of the, her friends that know me, because she, she saw my purple backpack and my big hair, mm. and she said, <laughs> "That I swear that looks like my aunt down there," and then. So I decided to walk around because I hadn't seen her yet. And just then she was walking up to me and she said, what? <laughs> I thought it was hallucinating. That's so great. It was fun. I got to cheer for her and all of the other amazing BMX freestyle mm. riders there. And uh, it was really a great experience. So I just got back late last night. And yeah. I mean, it's kind of the same type of love fog that you get from being at Burning Man, right? Because it's just, there's so much family and oneness and it's just all good stuff. And it's, mm -hmm. it has so much relevance for who I am as a business person right? and the clients that I attract now too. Mm -hmm. um, it's really amazing. Voila, how it works together, isn't it? It, do, it is. You know, we did the... Um, it, AIDS life cycle ride and they call that the love bubble. Wow. And it really is, you know, you're surrounded by all of these people that are just so positive and encouraging and supportive. There's very yeah. little negativity and you leave it feeling kind of sad because you're <laughs> back into the real world and it's not the same. So right. I, I really understand that. The idea for me in business is to bring that into everyday business life as well. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's part of what attracts me to events like this and why I go way out of my way and, and um, challenge myself almost, you know, Burning Man's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. And we normally go for two weeks every year. This is the first year we've missed in 10 years. Wow. And, you know, I think out of the struggle comes so much more that's relevant to our daily businesses. Mm -hmm. And it really teaches us what's important and how to keep things simple, 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 simple. Um, when we bought an RV to go to Burning Man the first time in 2006, and I love, I love being in my RV. <laughs> I love it because it's simple. It's, you home. Know? it's, mm -hmm. it's home, it's comfortable, but it's, there's not much that you have to, you know, not many moving parts, you know, except mechanically, but you know, the living situation is just, you know, everything is within reach. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in the business world, I, I try and apply those same principles of simplicity and love and passion and commitment, mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, um, which are things that I think scared me when I was younger. I didn't, I guess I didn't really have I don't the appreciation. think we got it then. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't really have the appreciation <laughs> then. And so I'm, I'm always in a, you know, well, I'll say most of the time in a state of gratitude and, um, and, you know, just kind of focusing in on what I'm grateful for mm -hmm. because, you know, things happen, life happens, things, you know, things go up and down. Um, my mom got cancer five years ago and that was, you know, a big roller coaster. And mm -hmm. you know, those things that you always think will never happen to you. And then they happen to you. Yeah. And yeah. so all of those things really drive my business, uh, choices, who I work with, um, you know, how I work with them. Mm -hmm. Every client is different and there's no cookie cutter approach. That's so great. It's just like social media, you know, all the social channels have a different personality. And so you really have to, you know, you have to kind of understand what the personality, I call it personality. Um, you know, sometimes I call it a dysfunctional family, you know, all of the, the different, uh, the nuances of Facebook, Twitter, right. you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, Snapchat, all of those things each one is so different. You can't address them all the same way. No, it's not a, no. it's not a cookie cutter approach. Yeah. And, and for every business, it's different too. And how yeah. this business fits with that, you know, it really is a customized thing and, and it's really about where their passion is and, and where your passion is. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really challenging and also really fun. Yeah, it is. It keeps it interesting. I actually, that's why I decided 
to also um, not go back to a mothership so mm-hmm. that I could have the freedom, which is a, is a, a very high value for me. Right. Um, to have the freedom, not only geographically to work wherever I wanted to work, mm-hmm. but also to, you know, kind of pivot and move, pivot and move. And, you know, if, try something, be adventurous, kind of like the Richard Branson formula. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, just do it. Just mm-hmm. don't overthink it. it. Try it. Mm-hmm. And really, so much of what we do is also an experiment. So it does take some trust and some patience to stick it out. Mm-hmm. It's like Gary Vaynerchuk always says, you know, it's like you're not going to get results on social media in six months or even a year. It's a long game. It is. You know, it's a marathon. Mm-hmm. It's not a sprint. And so it's really, again, it's important to have clients who understand that. So that we and be are up front with them about that. Absolutely. Right out yeah. of the gate so that we still have the freedom, as I mentioned, mm-hmm. to do what we do best and to try, you know, experiment with different things on different channels. And we replicate and repeat those things that work well. And then we watch it over time. You know, mm-hmm. we watch our numbers over time. We watch our statistics and the insights, you know, that we get from the different channels and we see what's been working and we do more of that. Right, exactly. And what you and lo- what isn't working, you get rid of. Leave the rest behind. Yeah. 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 Well, Lynn, I could talk to you for days. Someday <laughs> too, you yeah. and Gail and I will all get together in, in the wine country and spend days. Yes. That would be really fun. But um, I really want to let people know where they can find you before we close and, and okay. how to get in touch with you. Okay, well, I'm People FW, so the FW is for forward, mm-hmm. um, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. So if you just do slash People FW on all of those, then you'll get to my uh, links. And also my website is peoplefw.com. That makes it easy. <laughs> so, and I'm on LinkedIn too, so you can find me. But if you go to my website, um, there there's a link for every channel that I'm on there. So yeah. that's a good place to start. That's great. Yeah. Cool. Well, I hope thank everybody you. is not blinded by the hot pink on my website, but as you can tell, <laughs> I love pink. I can tell. I can me. tell. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again so much for joining us. And I'm sure that everybody got lots out of this show. And I will be p- posting this on YouTube. It'll also be live on our website at mindfulsocialmarketing.com. And you'll also be able to find us on Spreaker. So thanks again, Lynn. Thank and you. And everybody have a great Monday, Tuesday. Okay. Thanks, Janet. Bye, everybody. Bye.